No, no, look at it. Hold on, I'll put you on video. It looks like an angry chorizo. No, it's my fault really. She was scratching herself all the way home from the job center. Yeah, all right, bye mum. In these troubled times, it makes the most sense to settle into a kind of comfortable malaise. Maybe you're chucking on the Lion King or Return of the Jedi and just waiting for all of this to blow over. Except you're not. You're making Contagion trend on Netflix, you sick fucks. Well, instead of that, let's try the ultimate in social distancing. This is The Quiet Earth. Hello. My name is Zach Hobson. If there's anybody out there at all, could you please contact me at home, 2 Thurston Avenue, Grey Lynn, or ring me on 396-121. The Quiet Earth starts with a setup familiar to those who know Day of the Triffids, 28 days later of The Walking Dead. A man wakes up to find a changed world, but instead of finding killer plants, or zombies, or a Deliveroo driver sneezing on a vegan stir-fry, he finds something a lot worse. Nothing whatsoever. All the people and animals are gone. Crash planes still have their seatbelts fastened, and not even birdsong could be heard in the sky. Scientist Zach Hobson, played with a sort of wide-eyed stoicism by the late Bruno Lawrence, does what anyone else would do in this situation. Puts on a toga and hunts down Jesus. If you don't come out, I'll shoot the kid! Released in 1985, directed by Jeff Murphy, and featuring a cast of just three, unless you count this cameo by Tom Baker, the aforementioned Zach, Joanne and Appy, played by Alison Routledge and Pete Smith, respectively. The plot of the movie deviates from the novel so much that it becomes a sort of unofficial remake of 1959's The World, The Flesh and the Devil, another film I strongly recommend you check out if you hate people. Much like the films of George Romero, the why of the situation isn't really important, though it is addressed. The main focus of the film is on the human drama, in this case, Brains vs Brawn in the fight for the affections of Joanne, who may be the last woman on the planet. This all comes to a head against a ticking clock. The mysterious effect, which wiped out or displaced the population of the Earth, is set to happen again, and only Zack knows how to stop it. Though the film treads large on a sort of low-key spectacle, it's really the cast of three that carries it. Filled with intimacy, jealousy, rage and fear, it takes performers as strong as these three to really sell the written word on screen, and they do it with humanity and humour that prevents the movie from becoming suicidally depressing. The Quiet Earth is styled in a way that its title suggests. The camera placements and edits are sober and precise, and a strong emphasis is placed on visual storytelling. The empty cities and scenes of disaster are particularly arresting, as is a surreal freak-out sequence in the third act of the movie. Clocking in at a lean 90 minutes, the first act of which is carried entirely by Lawrence, I can't think of a better way to spend the collapse of civilization. Also, this is definitely in my top two films where a bloke wakes up in the apocalypse with his cock out. Nine out of 10. The Quiet Earth is available on Blu-ray and streaming now. And if you like this video, you can find me at Valverde Broadcasting, where we release videos every week and do watch parties and talk about movies and stuff. There's a link in the description, probably. Bye. Support your 7th or 8th favourite YouTube channel by buying crap, tat, junk, hogwash and filth at redbubble.com slash people slash Valverde shop.